The third question is from Abdul Jabbar from Hyderabad, India. I completely agree with your reply given in the previous session that Muslims must not migrate from Muslim countries to non-Muslim countries for a better living. I also agree with most part of your reply regarding Muslim living in non-Muslim countries, especially Western countries, should mostly migrate to a Muslim country. What are your views regarding Muslims living in India since India was previously ruled by Muslims? And I would like to thank Brother Abdul Jabbar for asking this question. He's referring to the reply I gave in my last session where a person asked that, is it permissible for a Muslim to migrate from Muslim country to a non-Muslim country for a better living? And I will just repeat in short and I said it is not permissible for a Muslim to migrate from a Muslim country to a non-Muslim country for a better living unless it is for education he can do for that couple of years of education and come back. Or if he wants to do dawa and he wants to become a full-time dai, going as a dai and giving dawa in a non-Muslim country is permissible, but for no other reason, for a better living or so that you can get more money or you can have a luxurious life. Besides these two reasons, for a better living or anything else, it is not permissible for Muslims to leave a Muslim country and go to a non-Muslim country, especially referring to the Western country. And then I went further to say that the verse of the Quran of Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 97, where Allah SWT says that the angel comes to take the life of the person who had died in sin, that how was your state? And he said that we were weak and oppressed. Then the angel replies that the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. So why didn't you migrate? And those who do not do that, Allah says, they will go to hell and their refuge will be evil. So based on this, there are three options for a Muslim living in a non-Muslim country. And I gave the reply that Muslim living in non-Muslim countries, especially referring to the Western countries, that if they cannot live openly, declaring themselves to be Muslims, or cannot practice some of the Islamic aspects, or they cannot practice most of it, or some of it, it becomes further for them to migrate to Muslim land. The second category, those Muslims living in a non-Muslim country where they can freely practice Islam and they have no problem at all and they can call themselves Muslims, they can do all the faraiz, there's no restriction at all. I don't know any such country. There may be parts of some country, but as a whole, I don't know. Some countries may be better than the others. But if such a situation is there, then it is not compulsory for them to migrate to a Muslim country. It is mustahab. That means they can stay. But yet better is to migrate. And the third condition is if the Muslim is oppressed or they are weak or they cannot migrate, then Allah will forgive them. This was my answer of three categories. But now the brothers posed the question, what about India? The Muslim living in India because India was ruled by the Muslim for more than a thousand years. So does India also come in the same category as Muslim country? And that's a very important question. And Jadakala for asking this question. There are some countries and one of the good examples is India. That India was ruled for a thousand years. And the population of India, approximately more than one third, about 40% of them were Muslims. Then the Britishers come and they come saying that they don't do business, but they want to control India. They started ruling India. And then when they left, they created a division amongst the Indians. They were living very peacefully. Even though the Muslims ruled India for about a thousand years, the Mughal, if the Muslim rulers would have forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam, there would not have been any non-Muslims alive in India. Many accepted Islam because they liked Islam. Many people remained as non-Muslims and there was no problem. But the Britishers, they had a policy of divide and rule. So when they left, they divided India into three parts and they divided the Muslims especially. And one third of the Muslims went to Pakistan, one third went in India, one third went to Bangladesh. They didn't give one country, they gave two countries and Bangladesh and Pakistan, which were known West Pakistan, East Pakistan, they split. So now Muslims are divided into three. In India, little bit more than one third remained, maybe about 37, 38, 39 percent remain in India. One third went to Pakistan, about 33 percent. Less than one third went to Bangladesh, about 29, 30 percent. But if you add all together, Muslims are 40 percent. Now when partition took place, India declared itself to be a secular country. It didn't declare itself to be a Hindu country. And when the constitution was laid down, it had a special rule. 
it was a secular country and it said that any citizen of India following any religion, that law of that religion will apply as far as civil cases are concerned. So if Muslims are living in India, they had a separate law and today also they have known as the Muslim personal law. The Christian have their Christian law. The Hindus, they have their Hindu law. So when this was drafted, it gave permission for all the religions to practice their religion freely. All the citizens of India. India was not at all a Hindu country and even today it is not. It is a secular country, it is a democratic country and it said that any citizen of India, whichever religion he belongs to can live here peacefully. So based on that, India is a unique case in the world where Muslim ruled for a thousand years and today also according to me, the majority of Muslims in any country in the world, number one is India. Though statistic wise it says number one is Indonesia, about 220-230 million Muslims. Number two is India, some about 200 million. Some people say that it is Pakistan, about 202 million. And third is Pakistan, some say second is Pakistan, third is India, and then fourth is Bangladesh. According to me, the Indian government doesn't declare the correct number of Muslims. They don't count many millions of Muslims in Assam, etc. I feel according to me, minimum Muslims would be 250 to 300 million today. So according to me, the country which has maximum number of Muslims living in any part of the world. Number one is India, then is Indonesia, then is Pakistan. The number of Muslims in India would be minimum 250 million, can even go up to 300 million. Now, when the partition took place, the government that was formed in India, the constitution says that every citizen of India has the right to preach, practice and propagate his religion. And it is just about four years back that I left my country and for more than 20 years, mashallah, for about 25 years, I did Dava openly, large audiences and India has been a very safe place for the Muslims. It is recently when the BJP government came to power, just hardly six years back in 2014, that the problem started. Previously, the problems were minor and the Muslim could live peacefully. There was no major problems at all. The politician, Hindu politician, meaning the BJP, which is a part of the RSS, these are fanatics and faces. And they started promoting the Hindutva and trying to misguide the people. And now there are problems created for the Muslims. But generally, for the Muslims living in India, it is very close to living in a Muslim country. They have their full rights. So Muslims living in India, it is perfectly permissible for them to live. Such close example is, for example, Singapore. Singapore first was part of Malaysia, where two-thirds of the citizens of Malaysia, they were Muslims. Previously were everything, later on, the non-Muslims came. And then Singapore became separate. And today Singapore has about 18 or 20 percent Muslims. So there also they have a Muslim personal law for the Muslims. So Singapore is also somewhere close to India, but naturally. The freedom in India is much more than freedom in Singapore. So there are certain few more countries like that, maybe Mauritius or some which may have a Muslim personal law. So in such countries, India is one of the best amongst these countries. In these countries where there is a Muslim personal law, where you can follow. I don't know of any Western country where a Muslim can follow Muslim personal law. Only the criminal law is common in India and these countries. But in the Western countries, certain things the Muslims are permitted. For example, they are allowed to have halls of worship. But they cannot marry according to the Islamic law. They cannot have more than one wife. The nikah is not valid. The divorce is not according to the Islamic Sharia. Inherit is not according to Islamic Sharia. You can will it. That's a different case. And neither can you openly practice your deen as you can do in India. Yes, there are some non-Muslim countries which are better than the other non-Muslim countries. So my answer was basically talking about non-Muslim countries, mainly the Western countries and the other non-Muslim country. So India will come close to a Muslim country, not fully like a Muslim country. It's not required for the Muslims in India to migrate. They can live and you have a lot of history of Muslims. And if you see the structure that I've created and a rich source of Islamic knowledge is there in India. So, but natural, Jazakallah for asking the question, this is a different case altogether like in India and other few countries of the world. Hope that answers the question.